Today I'm going to show you an awesome color grading technique derived from video editing. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we've got a really cool video for you. We're going to be doing a tutorial suggested by, let's check it out. This is Hourlo, and he says, please cre create a tutorial like this with a similar result, but for photos to get the Leibowitz look. Thanks. Now, going over here, we're going to look at, this is the link he sent us, and this is a tutorial, the Summer Blockbuster Color Grading Tutorial by Juan Millar. This is a great video. We're going to link to it down below. I suggest you guys watch it. Very, very cool. Now, Juan is talking about using a different program other than Photoshop. I don't even know what program it is. I don't edit video. That's not my job. And he's editing video and he's got different footage. So he does a great job at explaining some concepts and so we're going to take those back into Photoshop. Now, don't expect it to be the exact same, guys. We've got different footage. We are not shooting video. We're shooting stills and we're using a completely different program. So we're going to take the concepts and apply those to Photoshop, but obviously it's not going to be the exact same. And as far as getting the Annie Leibovitz look, there's a lot that goes into creating Annie Leibovitz's image. Um, she's got 40 plus years of experience as a top tier photographer. She shoots with uh, some of the most amazing uh, models and actresses in the world and actors as well. And uh, super high production budget, not to mention the people that retouch her images are the top retouching house in the entire world. So uh, could we say we could just reproduce Annie Leibovitz's work with a 10 minute Photoshop tutorial? No, not gonna happen, but we can do some color grading. So let's make it happen. All right, so here's our image of Ashley, and we're going to go ahead and do this. Now, what we want to do is we want to bring some blues and greens into our shadows, and then we want to make sure we have that, like, oranges in our highlights. So we're going with that teal orange look, and we're going to be using complementary colors to, uh, to cancel out any color cast that we might have here in our image. So to do that, the first thing we want to do, we're going to grab an adjustment layer, and I'm going to go down to color balance. So we've got a color balance adjustment layer. And I would always check uh, preserve luminosity. You want that to stay checked. Now, going with your shadows, I would not really suggest playing around too much with your shadows. You tend to get like some kind of weird looking, uh, it, it just tends to not really look as good as it could. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna reset that. I tend to uh, change just the midtones and the highlights. It usually works out quite a bit better. So our midtones, we wanna push now towards the blue. There we go. Let's just push them real hard, why not? And we want to push that towards green as well. Let's push even more towards blue. All right, we're just exaggerating this a little bit um, because it's a tutorial, so you should exaggerate a little bit to show your point. All right, there we go. So our greens and our blues. Now, most of the shadow detail here is not skin. Most of the highlight detail here is skin. So what we can also do is we can work with the highlights to pull some of that color into our highlights. That's not always going to be the case with every one of your images. I'm going to show you what to do if that's not the case, but in this case, the highlight detail is mostly in the skin. So we're also gonna go over to our highlights and now I wanna push those towards red. There we go, and towards yellow. Skin tones tend to be on the orange side, okay? So you wanna make sure that you do include, there we go, you wanna make sure the mixture of red and yellow is orange, right? So that looks pretty good to me. Now, anytime you're doing complex color grading, I really recommend taking a quick break. Get it to where you think it looks pretty good take a break, go step away for 10 minutes or so, come back and then see like, okay, maybe I could change that a little bit. Um, even just taking that quick break to talk to the camera just now, I realized maybe we'd need just a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow in there. So being that this is a tutorial, I'm probably not gonna get it perfect right now because you should always take a break and come back to it, but we're gonna get it pretty close. Okay, there we go. And here we have our color grading to start with on our image. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna bring some more detail from the original, from the skin tones in the original back over top of this. I don't really want this affecting my skin tones as much. Even though I did kind of color them again with the highlights, I don't want it affecting that much. So we've got two ways to select out the skin tones. I'm gonna show you the pluses and minuses of both. Actually, there are a myriad of ways. We're going to show you two of those. Okay, I'm gonna duplicate my layer so I can show you these different ways. The first way, let's just make this invisible, go to our background layer. We're gonna go up here to select and down to color range. So we're selecting the actual color range of our skin. So we're gonna click on there. If you need to select more, you can see the highlights here didn't get selected. That's one of the downfalls of selecting color range. Just click on your eyedropper, the plus eyedropper and click over there on that, in that area too. Let's click, click right there and there we go. We've got our uh, color range there in the uh, skin tone selected. We're gonna hit okay and there we go. We can see it's actually selected. So what I want to do now is click on my layer mask and here on the layer mask for this color balance layer, I'm going to hit command I and command D will deselect. 
So we've got the color range selected, and so this is basically not affecting those colors. Now, this, in my opinion, is not the best way, but it's probably the easiest way to do it. If you did want to adjust this a little bit, what you could, what you could do is actually go in here. Let's look at our layer mask. We can see it's like very, very um, dark. It's very dark, which means the layer is not going to be visible. Anywhere it's light, it will be visible. You can adjust this a little bit just by going on your, clicking on your layer mask and then hitting properties and then bringing the density of your layer mask down and you could even try bringing the feathering of your layer mask up. So now we can look at our layer mask and we can see it's just a little bit more blurred and it's not as dense. So that's going to look a little bit better. But here's the other way that I would probably use. Let's make this layer visible now. And now clicking on the layer mask, what we want to do is we want to select still the skin tones, but in a different way and then apply the list, those to layer mask. So what we're going to do, let's make those invisible real quick. We'll go up to our channels. And here what I want to do is choose our red channel. The red channel has a lot of detail in skin. Skin is red and yellow, is, it's also orange. So the red channel is usually a great channel to choose for skin. So what we're going to do is duplicate that, click and drag that down to the new channel icon. We've got red copy here. And I'm going to hit Command L. I just want to bring up our black levels just a little bit so I can really focus in just on our skin tones. There we go. Hit OK and we're good to go. Now what we're going to do is hold down the control or the command key and click right here on our layer mask. Now, it doesn't look like everything is selected, but it is. Just anything over 50% selected happens to have these marching ants around it. Everything is still selected, so don't worry about it. Okay, so we've got everything selected, all the light areas, the dark areas do not get selected when you select from channels. We're going to go back to our layers, okay, and we're going to turn this layer on. We'll click on our layer mask here, and what I want to do is now hit Command I on this layer mask and we'll hit Command D to deselect. So let's look at this layer mask. We can see it's extremely detailed here. That layer mask compared to this layer mask, you get a lot of, you lose a lot of information. I realized that I did, in fact, feather it. Even if I bring the feathering down, we can see that you get a lot more variation, a lot more information here for using channels than you do with selecting your color range. So I would suggest using channels. And alter option will get you back to the normal view. So we can turn this off and on and see that it does affect our shadows, but not necessarily our skin tones, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you want this to go even farther, if you want less of an effect on your skin tones, all you have to do is click on your layer mask and hit Command L. And we're going to adjust the levels. Now, the reason why this works is because the darks on a layer mask make a layer invisible. The lights make it visible. So if we have something that looks like this, where these darks are not that dark, if we make them darker, it will then become less visible on this layer. This layer will become less visible where those darks are. So we can make them darker using levels. So you can hit Command L and pull this from the left to the right, making those darks darker, making this area, and you can see it happening right there on the layer mask. See, it's lighter here. As I pull this over, it's getting darker. It will make it affect those areas even less. So you can just adjust this and see in real time what you're doing there. All right. And there we go. This is looking really good. So that's our, uh, that's the reds not being affected by this layer. So we can see we have a relatively neutral skin tone there. So there's this one where you can see this kind of like hard edge. And this one is just a bit more smooth. So I would suggest using channels, even though you might be a little less familiar with them. I think they're a better solution. So we're going to delete this color balance layer. OK, now the next thing I want to do is talk about color casts. If we do have color casts in this image, we want to do our best to remove them. Before we do, if I want to select out my skin tones and bring that red-orange balance a little bit more, let's try that, and then we can remove color casts as per the video that we just saw. So the next thing I want to do, let's just create another adjustment layer. We're going to go up to color balance again, and I'm just going to choose our mid-tones, and we're going to push those towards red and a little bit towards yellow. Here we go. So we have that nice orange. Now, we're just going to do the same thing, basically selecting out her face. But I've already got a layer mask. Check this out. I've already got a layer mask that does select her face, right? Makes sense. So what we would want to do is I want to just copy this layer mask from one layer over to the other one. So Alt or Option, copy this from one layer to the other one. It says Replace Layer Mask. We'll say Yes. There we go. And now this is only visible where the face is not. But if I hit Command-I on this layer, now it's only going to be visible where we actually do see her face. So this is what our layer mask looks like now. Pretty cool. So we don't have to go back in the channels and do it again. We could just use the same one. Now here in our color balance, we can just adjust this a little bit more now that we actually see the effects on the image. And there we go. And that's looking pretty good. So it's really bringing that orange. So there's our before and our after 
we've got those uh, like the blues and the teals and the shadows, and then a little bit more of the orange and the highlights. Uh, in my opinion, that's a little bit too strong of an orange. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the opacity down on that just a little bit. Okay, looking great. Now let's say we want to cancel out some of these color casts. We've got a color cast there in the deepest shadows, and we've got some in the highlights as well. If we want to cancel these out, there's a really cool way to do that. What I want to do is create a new layer, and I'm going to grab the, uh, the color here in her skin. We're just going to hold Alt or Option and grab this color here in the highlights of her skin. These are the, this is the color cast that I want to cancel out. So we're going to grab that, and I know her skin should be about this color. We're just going to cancel out a little bit. Should bring it closer to neutral. So we're going to hold, uh, grab your brush tool, hold Alt or Option, and then sample the highlights of a person's skin or the highlights of the area you want to cancel the color cast. And then hold Alt or Option, Delete, and fill with that color. OK. Now, what we're going to do, we have this color. Let's go ahead and figure out how to get the opposite hue of this color so we can then colorize this image. If I would just hit Command-I, we get the opposite color. This is the opposite hue as well as uh, it's just the opposite color. So if we change this back from normal down here to color, what we get is the opposite color coloring this image. Now, if we want to mix the color we had before and the color after, which are opposites, all we have to do is change this opacity down to 50%, and they're going to meet in the middle. So hit V and the number 5 to change your opacity, and that's just going to make it perfectly mixed. So here on those skin tones, this should be relatively neutral. Now, what I want to do is make sure I'm only affecting those skin tones. We don't necessarily need to use a layer mask for this. We can use Blend If. So I'm going to double click here because those, those are the highlight areas, right? That's, that was our goal, to reduce the color cast of the highlight areas. So I'm going to hold Alt or Option, and I'm going to grab this from the left side and go over to the right. There we go. And we can see, depending on how you do this, so it's, it's going to be very you know, up to you. If you want to go all the way to the right, it's going to reduce the color casts a little bit less. There we go. And a little bit more. Uh, so you can see that's more of an effect and less of an effect. The reason I really love Blendif is you can just see exactly what you're doing. You could just look at it and say, OK, that looks good. Pretty easy, right? Oh. And this puts the opposite color in those highlight areas, which cancels out the color cast. And we can see now we've got a much more neutral looking color there in the highlights, which is exactly what we want. Now, depending on how perfect you get that blend if is where you're going to find that fine range. Um, this is still a little bit too of this blue for me, so you can then subtract your opacity a little bit more. It's still going to reduce the color cast, but just by a little bit less. So we're going to hit V and the number 4, and let's try 30%, and there we go. So about 30% is looking great. So we're, we're actually uh, reversing the color cast on her skin, which makes it look a little bit more neutral. Very, very cool. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with our shadows. So let's create a new layer grab our brush tool and hold Alt or Option, and we're going to grab the shadow color. Now I'm going to hold Alt or Option, Delete. That's going to fill it with that color. And hit Command I, which is now this. It's the opposite color. So we're going to change this now from normal down here to color. There we go. We're going to hit V and the number 5. And you can see this is like back to pretty much black. It's canceling out the color cast, which is very cool. Now I just want this to be visible where the darks are. Double click here. And we're going to hold down Alt or Option. And we're going to go from the right to the left now and have this just affect our darks. And we can just decide on where you'd like to stop. And there we go. So if we want it to only be visible in the darkest of the darks, you can do that as well. All right, so that's color canceling, canceling the color cast in our darks. Now, I don't mind a little bit of a cast. So I'm just going to bring this back to about 30% visibility. All right, and let's, let's bring this about 20%. So now that you have all these things in place, it's kind of time to adjust everything and make sure that you actually like what, we're, what we've got here. This color that we added here, I still don't think it's right. So let's just go in here, and we can pull it a little bit more towards yellow. There we go. All right. And this is the point at which I would take a break. Step away from it for five minutes. Go get some tea, whatever you want. Come back. And if the colors look great to you, if you're like, oh, cool, I nailed this effect, you're good to go. If you're still like, ah, it's not quite right, then you want to go back to these layers and just tweak them out just a little bit here and there, and you should be good to go. All right, looking really, really good. OK, so that's it, guys. Coloring the shadows and then grabbing a layer mask to then make those not visible where the, where the skin is, then doing the same thing with the highlights, and then canceling out color casts there in the very brightest of the brights, 
and the darkest of the darks in the shadows. Let's group those together and let's look at our before and our after. So here's our before and our after. Really, really cool. We've got that color cast, but the skin still looks nice and natural and neutral. If you want to, after this, I'll just grab a hue saturation adjustment layer. You could either, if the effect is too strong, I recommend lowering your saturation. If, it's, if you feel like you could go a little stronger, I would recommend increasing your saturation just a little bit. There we go. And we've increased it just a little bit more. That's it, guys. Now, nah, you know what? I think it was better before. <laughs> That's the whole point of taking a break and looking at it again. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, you can't leave an image in a comment below. If you are on Flurn.com, you can. Please apply this effect to your images. I would love to see them. Leave them in a comment down below. Thanks again, guys, and I'll Flurn you later. And that was only the third time that I recorded this episode. What? For more information on this episode, go to flurn.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. These are the most in-depth Photoshop tutorials available on the internet. If you want one for free, just sign up for our newsletter following the link right down below and it'll be delivered to you instantly. We also feature exclusive interviews, written contents, inspiration from people like you as well as professional photographers. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.